This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 143 of the Stable Scoop Radio Show. She drives like the boys. Please support our sponsors as they make this show possible. Our title sponsor is Omega Alpha. You can find them at omegaalpha.ca. This episode is also brought to you by Equestrian Collections at equestriancollections.com. Plus, Uncle Jimmy's, where you can find them at uncle-jimmy's.com. I am Glenn the Geek. And I'm Helena B. And you're listening to the Stable Scoop Radio Show on the Horse Radio Network. Boy, do we have a great show planned for everybody today, Helena. It's going to be so much fun. We're going to... You know, last week we talked about weight loss and how skinny you're getting and how you're going to have to buy new clothes soon. And we had your husband on making me hungry. And then, <laughs> you know, as a follow-up to last week's show, if you didn't get a chance to hear it, we, we did talk about nutrition and diet and, and how much weight Helena's lost and how she did it. Well, you've motivated my wife and I. Now, i got to say I'm taking her into this a little bit dragging and screaming. But I do the cooking, so she has no choice. Um, <laughs> so we actually have started to implement the drink a glass of water before, uh, before meals, like we talked about last week. And also, uh-huh. uh, I've cut our portions in half. So we're starting to eat half of what we normally would. We haven't changed what we're eating necessarily. Right. We're just reducing the quantity and, and drinking the water before. So you said start with steps. Well, that's the first couple steps we're starting with. And how long have you been doing that? Just a couple Only a of days? Week. Only a Only week a since week. last week. So Okay. That's a big deal. A week, a full week is a big deal to make a change. But we're, we're, and now I notice that she's trying, she's starting to be better about it too. So, you know, I think it's kind of working and, and you got us motivated. So thank you. And then we also had uh, a listener post on our, our Facebook page about her tremendous inspirational story of her weight loss and getting in shape. And we're going to have her on the show today. Her name is Aubrey and she basically lost half her body weight. And when you see the pictures, it was dramatic, wasn't it? She went from 200 to 115 pounds. Yeah. So we're going to talk to her about how she did it and, you know, a little bit about, about her. She's been a listener for a long time of our show, of all of our shows. And I'm just excited to talk to her about how she accomplished it. And, you know, that show meant a lot to her last week. So let's hope, let's hope it means a lot to everybody and we all get in better shape because of it. And then you've done a good thing and you can sleep well at night, you and your hubby. Yeah, I could use a good night's sleep, actually. Well, we have a couple emails I want to get to, and I wanted to say that after we have two guests today, uh, Aubrey's going to be the first, and the second one is a a really lovely girl by the name of Wendy Ying. She's a doctor of veterinary medicine, uh, but we ha- I had her on originally. I didn't even know she was a doctor because she's one of the very few four-in-hand competition drivers in the world. Uh, that's a female. So... I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to talking to her about that, but she also practices uh, traditional Chinese veterinary medicine, acupuncture and herbs and, and all of that. So we're going to talk to her about that. I didn't know that until we started doing the research, and so we're going to get to her a little bit later, too. But first, we had a couple emails I want to share with everybody. The first one I'll do, uh, she says, I, uh, this is Kelsey, says, I've been a listener since episode seven of Stable Scoop. She's wow. Crazy. She's just nuts. I yeah. listen to every episode of Scoop and have added Tack and Habit. Yeah, hey, good for you. I particularly enjoy Helena. She is my favorite. Oh, yay. I hope her knee is healing. I was recently out of the saddle a while due to breaking my collarbone in two places. I know it is tremendously in capital letters frustrating. And she listens to horses in the morning. She thinks Jamie is a hoot. I used to listen on my commute five days a week to the barn, which is 30 minutes, but I've recently moved 10 minutes, so she listens when she can. Well, Kelsey, thank you so much for being a listener. We really appreciate it. I noticed a trend, though, Kelsey, and that is she loves Helena. She loves Jamie. Didn't say a word about me. Obviously can't stand me. Just puts up with me to get to you two. So (laughs) just saying that uh, you could have mentioned me in the email, Kelsey. Just saying. Just saying. You want to do the next one? I, I, maybe. (laughs) Sure. Um, Okay, this one is from Amy Gilbert. This is a good one, too. Hi, Helena. Sorry to hear about your knee. That is such a bummer. I hate it when I get knocked out early in the riding season and have to wait so long to get back on. I was listening to you on the Stable Scoop podcast today when you said, with a laugh, that you need knee protection for riding. 
I think we said you need helmets for your knees. <laughs> <laughs> well, she submitted a picture. Uh, she said she wears hard hockey knee pads when she trains greenies. And although you can't see them under her coat is in addition to a vest, are hard hockey elbow pads, too. And uh, you definitely have to put this, this photo put up because up. you can't see it. Yeah. <laughs> she says, you might say I have hit the ground a few times and don't mind looking a little different while I'm training the young- youngsters. Sometimes I wonder why I don't wear these pads all the time when I ride. I suppose a dressage judge might question my horse's compliance if I showed up looking like a hockey goalie, though. <laughs> <laughs> Heal fast and get back in the saddle. Again, thank you, Amy. I, I just, I love fan mail. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give Amy a plug here for her barn. It is. It uh, is the Twin Tears Horse, and she has a website at the Twin Tears Horse dot blogspot dot com. Good job, Amy. Thank you so much for your letter. And I know she's been a listener for a long time, too. I recognize her name. Well, let's, get to, let's, get, let's uh, take a break for our title sponsor, Omega Alpha, who I got to see at Rolex again. It was so much fun to see them over there. And we'll take a break for them, and then we'll come back, and we'll, we'll go right to Aubrey Miller, whose story is inspirational about her weight loss and her getting in shape and about her eventing and full-time horse career now. Well, Helena, Omega Alpha Pharmaceuticals creates only natural health products. Their scientists, guided by Dr. Gordon Chang, formulate a wide variety of mainly herbal health products to address many equine health problems. And I have on the line here Kyle Carter, who is an international eventer and well-known throughout the eventing world, who uses Omega Alpha products. Kyle, I understand that you started using uh, Omega Alpha about a year ago. Yeah, I've, I've been using it for about a year and have noticed a remarkable difference in the horses that have been on it. And then um, if, they've, if they've come off of it, the horse's health always has been better on it. Um, it's one of the few supplement companies that I wholeheartedly believe in. Well, thank you, Kyle. You know, Omega Alpha brings consumers the perfect marriage of nature and science. Look for all of their products at retailers nationwide or visit their website at omegaalpha.ca. That's omegaalpha.ca. Well, we're back. We thank Omega Alpha for being a sponsor. You know, they do have the tremendous herbal products uh, that we talk about all the time here on this show. They have over two dozen different products. So go on to their website at omegaalpha.ca and check out if they have a product that you think might help them help your horse with something that they're dealing with. Well, let's talk to Aubrey about something she dealt with. She posted on her Facebook page after last week's show about her tremendous weight loss and how she got in shape. And we wanted to find out how she did it and what, what secrets she had for doing this. So this is Aubrey Miller and uh, about her inspirational story, and it really is inspirational to everybody. Welcome to Stable Scoop, Aubrey. I am really excited to hear your story because your photographs are inspirational and I'm sure that the story behind those photographs are equally inspirational. So uh, what what do you think? You're on the show here. Did you think that losing half your body weight (laughs) would get you on the Stable Scoop show? (laughs) That was the whole reason I did it. (laughs) I knew it. I set her up perfectly. (laughs) Good answer, Aubrey. (laughs) Seriously, though, we were... uh, You could tell she's listened before, Helena. Yeah, I know. No kidding. I've been listening for years. (laughs) I've been whining about this, that, and the other thing, being a couple pounds overweight here and there. Um, But you really accomplished something that is uh, challenging, to to say the least. Tell us what happened. How did you start? What, What weight did you start at, and what motivated you to drop the weight? Um, I was pretty close to 200 pounds. I'm like 5'5", five, five, and um, I have a lot of muscle, so I carried it relatively well. But it, it was kind of one of those things where, you know how when you see one picture of yourself and you go, oh, my God. Yeah. It was one of those. <laughs> and I saw a picture from a wedding and went, oh, I've got to do something about that. So, and that pretty much started it and started it down that, that road, and I'm such a... Um, obsessive compulsive person that it I don't come up when I start things I finish them so right and you probably do them really well my guess is you're a little bit of an overachiever a little bit yeah <laughs> <laughs> so you uh, now had had you always been on the heavy side or is this a new uh, body thing for you was being at no, two- uh, you know I was even even as a kid I was I was a little on the bigger side so I pretty much spent my whole life pretty chunky 
And then you said, okay, I got to do something about it. And the first thing you did was what? Actually, that um, went to a calorie count. I found that online and um, joined one of the forums. There were a couple forums of, you know, you want to lose this much weight in this much time and where you went in once a week and gave, gave them your weight and did all that stuff and just kind of calories and pretty much did that. And it, and it, you know, but I'm a lot like you. I know they say, oh, don't, don't get on the scale every day, but I, I'm one of those people and I, it was really helpful to get on every single morning. And I, and that's what I did and kept everything logged and just kept at it. Did, okay. So you did that and they do tell you not to do that. Almost every yeah. plan in the world tells you not to get on the scale every day, but you did that. And obviously it worked for you. Did you, were those days that you went up in weight really? Cause you always do. Were they depressing or did, was it just extra motivation for you? Um, I guess it was a little either way. You know, you go up a little and you go, okay, just water, just water, just water, and then it go back right. down and you go, okay, that's good. So, yeah, yeah there's, a, there's a little bit of uh, self-talk you have to do when things like that happen, but you also have to kind of be prepared for it because that's, you know, that's how it goes. But it, I, it I got pretty really lucky that mine just kind of, it tended to just kind of go down. I didn't have a lot of fluctuations. Well, you know, the harder you work, the luckier you get, is, is what I always say. Yeah. I mean, you know, for people who are competitive, naturally competitive, I found that the seeing the scale every day is you, you just end up competing against yourself. And exactly. I know that event eventers are for the most part are <laughs> those those joyfully competitive people, you know. Um that we are. And you you it also as as a competitor and as a horse person, you have to really reflect. You have to look at, at yourself. Um, you know, to be a good rider and a good horse person, you have to understand yourself. Um, and then when you're trying to lose weight, same thing, you have to understand what it is that motivates you and what structure you need to stay motivated to go forward and to achieve results. Yeah. Do you find that 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 helped you? Yeah, yeah. The, the structure, I think, like you said, is, was the main huge thing. Just I, I still, it's been a couple of years now, I still write down everything I eat and I have to keep track of it, and it just, I, I really enjoy kind of structuring everything out, and that's my obsessive compulsiveness coming through, but <laughs> that <laughs> Does your a room, lot, so. you have one of those clean rooms, too? Your your house is nice and clean? Yeah, I label a lot of things. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you are, you are one list. strange horse girl, because most horse girls' houses are a disaster. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah, I, I run um, a big hunter barn for a living, and I'm a pretty much the same way in the barn so <laughs> and aubrey i you know aubrey i don't know we didn't mention this earlier but aubrey is actually listens to our morning show every morning we and uh she call you're, you're the one that calls in to listen right i am because my phone stopped working on the listening on um online well so and, i have to call in every day <laughs> and it was so funny helena the one day when she wasn't there i commented <laughs> on it because i was we kind of count on her. We see her call, and we see her that she's there listening, and we know there's one person listening to our show that day. <laughs> and then the day she wasn't there, it was like, why are we even doing it? Aubrey's not here. Um. <laughs> so Yeah, I think I might have been listening online that day, though. Yeah, see, I know. You did. You posted on Facebook, I'm here, I'm here. So <laughs> yeah, we I, I was there. I, just, I, I can't listen in the barn online, but I can listen at home online. I was home that day. <laughs> We actually do have a lot of listeners, but you're our comfort. We we see you. <laughs> so, Aubrey, let me ask you, did you change what you were eating? Did you change the foods that you were eating? Did you change the quantities? What exactly did you do? Very much so. I, I changed the quantities mostly. But I, I, like, like Colina was talking about before, when you start to look at the calories on things, you start to get really... Um, you know, cognizant of it, and you start to go, oh, my God, there are 480 calories in that candy bar. I don't want that. And you kind of, so as, as you're writing it down, you're like, well, I'm going to have to write that down. I'm not going to eat that because I'll have to write that down. And so I had a had a goal every day, and calorie count gives you a goal, and you, and you, you know, log it in, and if you go over, then being me, I get very upset that I went over. <laughs> but, <laughs> right. Um, you stick to it, and, and that was pretty much it. Now, the going back to, I mean, because that's exactly how it, it worked for me. And, um, you know, one of the good things about calorie count is that it's a flexible enough tool and you can, it does go mobile, by the way. It's a flexible enough tool where if you understand what you need 
for example, Aubrey and I needed structure. There are people out there who might need less, you know, or greater flexibility. Calorie count can give you that, that kind of flexibility. Yeah. Um, and the, the forums are great. Yes, just knowing that there's somebody else out there who's doing mm-hmm. the same thing. Yeah. And, you know, um, or has, a, like, sometimes I get inspired by other people's, or, or have a question, or I just want to whine. Yeah. Then I just oh, yeah. I just log on to Stavis Group. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Glenn, and I whine online. Now, I want to talk a little bit about your your horses and your, your life as a rider. Do you ride professionally or do you ride recreationally? Um, no, I'm a, I'm, I guess I'm technically not an amateur just because I run, I'm a barn manager for a living, but I right. ride as an amateur or I, okay. I ride in a capacity as an amateur. Um, I don't train for other people or anything. I just have one horse that I event right now. Okay. And, and the reason I asked that is because I wanted to know exactly which horse that is. Is that the, the bay mare with the, um. There's a photograph on your Facebook page. Do you yeah, have? that's that's my one. That is um, her um, show name is Smile Like You Mean It, and she's a um, off the track thoroughbred. I got her back in '07 from her trainer in um, of the Penn National, and well, pretty much trained her from the ground up. And she, she is stunning. <laughs> well, thank you. She's she, a good girl. She Most is. Glenn, you got it. There's a picture. That's there's a picture of you yep. in the water complex. Where is that, by the way? That is, um, I believe, at the fence, uh, which is in Norwood, North Carolina. I think. Okay. Something like that. It's it's a fabulous photograph, and you guys both have the same expression. <laughs> and you know what what it says to me is, I can see now why you were successful in getting fit because looking at this mare, you taking her from the track from her previous life and turning her into what this photograph represents, I think is a great um, visual for what you've achieved. Well, thank you. You know, we could, we, we need to put the, can we put this picture up on our, on stable scoop? Yeah, I'm trying, actually, I'm, I'm looking on our Facebook page trying to find okay. it. Um, but uh, yeah, it, go ahead and just send it to me that, uh, that we'll use that as our show notes picture. If that's okay with you, Aubrey. Sure. All right. Now, the next question I have for you is how hard after you took off the weight? And we should say, well, we never did say, you went from 200 pounds at five foot five to 115 pounds. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's half your body weight. Half of you, yeah, pretty much. Half of you went away. <laughs> so I have two questions for you. One, how did you find your riding to be after that? Was it a lot easier? And did you find yourself, you know, accomplishing more because you were fit? And two, were you riding the same horse during that weight? And did you see a difference in your horse having to carry less? Um, well, I did a lot of um, fitness stuff as well. I did the P90X program a couple times, and um, I run a lot. So a lot of the fitness stuff additionally made a lot of um, the distance riding and stuff like that so much easier, which was really helpful. And I pretty much, I had, um, in the first picture, that was my trocaner that I'd had before my thoroughbred. And um, But I, I had the thoroughbred at the same time as her. And, um, you know, she didn't really seem to notice much of a difference, honestly. It was, uh, <laughs> but, but she was also, um, let's see, she was a year and a half or two years off of the track when I started and now she's four years off the track. So her, her training is progressed as that happens. So there's a lot of kind of other changes happening too. But, but so she, she just didn't really seem to notice. <laughs> now, she, did you notice? Oh, I noticed. Yeah, yeah <laughs> definitely yeah. came, came off of the cross country course, just elated instead of winded. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. Now there was another website too, that you mentioned. Um, oh yeah, the Hungry Girl. It's an entire um, kind of complex. They have a TV show, they have a website, um, and uh, cookbooks and all sorts of fun stuff. I Hungry believe girl. it's hungrygirl.com. It, it's yes, hungry-girl.com. It's super cute. It's uh, it's intelligent, and that's the other thing is a lot of these diet and fitness programs are um, they just sort of they seem to address specific type of person and to mm-hmm. find uh tools and advice for people who really know <laughs> who who are smart i don't you know i don't 
mean to come off in a different way, but maybe it's that obsessive compulsive part of us, but we're, we do our homework. We do a lot of research. We're overachievers. Just tell me the facts, you know, don't, don't talk to me like I'm a moron. Just tell me what I need to do. And, you know, this is where my husband came in. He simplified it for me. And he said, just it's calories in versus calories out. And that's yeah. when I said, well, maybe I should just keep track of the calories. I love how they do this on here. I was just looking through some of the recipes, and they have mm-hmm. uh, called Chew the Right Thing. And <laughs> yeah. they actually have the Applebee's version of Applebee's Cajun Shrimp Pasta and then their version. And I love their headlines. Is, uh, under their version is Bite It, and under the Applebee's version is Fight It. <laughs> and, yeah. and they show you side by side what the calorie counts and things are for both of them. And I'm not kidding. On this one Applebee's Cajun Shrimp Pasta, Applebee's version was 1,190 calories. And if you made their version, it was 265. It's crazy, and the portions right? portions are huge, too. Yes. Like, you would think that they're not, but um, they use a lot of these uh, tofu shirataki noodles or something, which... Are, I really, really like them, and there are, like, no calories in these noodles. So you can have huge portions of the noodles, and it just... So all the portions are really big, too, which is awesome, because I like to eat, too. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing, is you don't want to give up that your enjoyment of food. You know, you don't yeah. have to. It's not all bunny food. Yeah, they, yeah. they have just... all, the guilt, all the guilty stuff just right. really broken down to guilt-free stuff, and I just... I love it. I like just the guilty stuff. Re- re-educate yourself. On mm-hmm. what food, what's in your food, or you yeah. know, and it's a whole movement. I think, you know, f- for us, it. I mean, I don't know about you. For me, it was dropping the weight and staying fit. I, I think I'm a little bit older than you are, and I, I had to make sure that, um, like you know, being even just a couple pounds overweight at my height and my age does present some health risks. Um, yeah. So it wasn't just about looking good; it was about feeling good and being healthy. Um, and so, but, but this is a good start. It's a good, um, like they say, Oh, don't go on a diet, you know, make a lifestyle change. Yeah. But if you really stick to it, um, it really is a lifestyle change and so much more will improve than just the way you look. Do you feel that way, Aubrey, that other things have fallen into place for you besides your, just the weight? Yeah. I mean, I had a lot of like, kind of a lot of life changes happen around the same time too and um, moved into a new place and all sorts of fun stuff like that. So you know, a lot of things did fall into place. Except for the OCD, she's still labeling her I'm underwear still very, very, very Yeah, much. yeah, you're labeling yeah. all your tack. Every Brit has its own hook. We know you. It does, but it's but it's useful that way because then I can find things. <laughs> Let me tell you Nobody something. Nobody likes to do stalls after me because I I, I pick and pick and pick and pick because I'm yeah. just it has to be perfectly clean or it drives me crazy. That's why she listens to our show because it takes her six hours to do two stalls in the morning. I, well, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, please. Once I posted on Chronicle of the Horse, I said it takes me an hour to do two stalls. Is something wrong with me? <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, but you know what? Hey, I used to color code all the, uh, the instructor's lessons at Myopia. Ask Jennifer well, about that, Glenn. <laughs> each, we had four instructors, and each instructor used to come in and look at the whiteboard, and they knew what color they were. And that's, that was their lessons for the day. It was fabulous. I got so many compliments on it. It's efficient that way. It is. It saves, at the end of the day, it saves you time, and it saves a lot of people mm-hmm. from knocking on your door and bugging you. <laughs> exactly. Well, Aubrey, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. And congratulations on what you've done. And I think the biggest accomplishment here is that you did it, and it's, what, a couple years later now, and it's still off, which yep. is the biggest thing. You know, most people can lose weight. Very few can keep it off. And so. that's, the, that's being anal and sticking with uh, keeping tabs of everything all the time. <laughs> Do you ever just go by some place and want to get a big fat greasy burger just for the hell of it oh i want to all the time okay because <laughs> i wanted time, to make but... sure you were still human just checking oh yeah out. yeah well that's actually why i really like that website because i can i can come home and make this big greasy nasty burger for 200 calories because it's a boca burger and i love those things so okay. <laughs> you can't and you know what cut yourself some slack too that's that's the other thing when yeah. you're so structured in your lifestyle and what you eat when you when you create those boundaries for yourself, you now have the room to stretch those boundaries. You can now flex and say, I really need the full fat, full meat grease burger. And yeah. the next day you go right back to your lifestyle because it's so ingrained in you. So 
you know, you set, you sort of set that structure and now you have the flexibility to every once in a great while step yeah. outside of that. But remember that it's a slippery slope. Oh yeah. You know, that's well, true. Well, thank yeah. you, Aubrey. We appreciate it. We're going to post Aubrey's pictures before and after, which you're not going to believe, on our show notes at StableScoop.com. And if you want to see them uh, also, you can go to our Facebook page at Stable Scoop Radio Show. And thank you for also being an avid listener. We, I know you've been listening for a long time. We really appreciate you, and we appreciate everybody that listens. Thank you so much. Although you're only half the listener you once were. I just wanted to mention that. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to get a stats go down. Yeah, my <laughs> stats went down. That's right. It's a, they're half of what they were before. Thanks a lot, Aubrey. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. I turned a couple people on to it, too. So. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks, Aubrey. All right, Thanks. cut. Good job, Aubrey. That was terrific. Yeah, well, thank you. I can't thank Aubrey enough for joining us today because uh, I feel so much better about my own OCD. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apparently, that's, my own need apparently that seems to be a requirement when trying to lose weight. <laughs> but um, I, but I think, like I said in the in the, the segment, is that there are pe- people who are competitive by nature. Seem to you know you know that you, you know find something that works for you and stick with it. That's really what it boils down to. And I'm so pleased that it it's worked so well for Aubrey. I think um, I think she's a, a great representation of of the horse world. Rock on, Aubrey. Yeah, and she you know she has been a loyal listener. She comments all the time on Facebook and. If you would like to do the same, you can you can follow us on our Facebook page there at uh, Stable Scoop. Just look up Stable Scoop Radio Show. And another great representation of the horse world is one of our favorite sponsors, Equestrian Collections. And we're going to take a minute to hear from them. Wow, that was one of your best transitions ever. Yeah, I know. Oh, we're good. You know, two and a half years, you're good. You're, you're <laughs> Equestrian Collections brings the whole universe of equestrian shopping to your fingertips. Any given day, they have over $100 million of products for you to choose from. They know that riding and taking care of your horse takes up lots of your time, so Equestrian Collections is open for you 24-7. And their advanced technology allows you to find exactly what you need on the website and to check out in a little under seven minutes. This week, I wanted to encourage you to check out their tent sale and closeout sections. They have 42 pages of closeout and discounted merchandise for you at unbelievable savings. From riding shirts to bits to stirrups to helmets, and the list goes on and on. And the prices I see here just cannot be beat. Visit EquestrianCollections.com today. Well, we're back. You know, something happened, uh, and I did talk about it on the show, but I'll mention it again because it relates to our next guest. My wife put together a, the most, the bestest birthday present ever. And it, my birthday happened to fall on Easter, and she still arranged with, uh, with Sterling Grayburn at the Gala Driving Center and his lovely uh, betrothed. Is it betrothed when you're engaged? Betrothed. betrothed. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Uh, Wendy Ying, his, his fiance, uh, Wendy Ying, uh, he, she worked with Wendy to get this put together, and I got to go out and drive a four-in-hand carriage team of hackney ponies. Uh, and they took a couple hours off on their Easter day to do this just because my wife begged. Uh, nice. And, you know, it was so nice of her. I had no idea until we showed up the farm what was going to happen. It was so cool. It was really the best birthday I ever had. Well, while I was there, I got to meet Wendy, and she rode back in the carriage, and I was so fascinated with her. She's so spunky and so much fun. And all I knew about her was she's one of the very few foreign, female four-in-hand uh, competition carriage drivers in the world. And she has some really cute horses that she <laughs> calls sport cobs. And I said, you got to come on the show and talk about being a driver. And then I found out when I was doing the research today for the show that she's also a doctor of veterinary medicine, and she practices traditional Chinese veterinary medicine. And you know, we thought, well, we got to talk to her about that, too, because that's right up our alley, and Helena just loves that stuff. Oh, she, and she's just a Pandora's box of, of horse and life lessons and knowledge, and she likes to share. I mean, this was definitely one of those boxes. It was a lot of fun to open up. Well, let's let's uh, let's let you share in that. This is Dr. Wendy Ying, and she lives uh, right up the street from me in Georgetown, Kentucky. Hi, Wendy, and welcome to the Stable Scoop Show. Thank you for being on. Hi, guys. Thank you for having me. And thank you so much for everything you did with my wife to help put that uh, special birthday together, and for for you and and your lovely fiance. 
to take time out of your Easter day to spend a couple hours with us and to really was was the best birthday I've ever had. Oh, well, I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad you had fun. But um, there's nothing we'd rather do than drive around the yard on a Sunday. So, uh, well, it was it we was t- terrific and and uh, Jennifer said you should have seen my face when Sterling handed me all those reins to drive those <laughs> ponies. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, what I, I would have given. See, <laughs> but one of the people I met while out there, obviously, was Sterling, who was helping me out doing my thing out there on my birthday. But Wendy was the one that really helped put all this together with Jennifer. And I got to meet her, and I was so excited to meet her because she is so much fun. And there were some things that you were holding out, though. W- one of the things I learned while I was out there is that Wendy is one of the uh, very few four-in-hand competition drivers in the world, which is pretty cool in itself. Uh, But we also learned then, as I started doing my research to have you on today, that you are a veterinarian and that you practice uh, Chinese veterinary medicine, traditional Chinese veterinary medicine. So there's so many facets to you that we have to talk about today. (laughs) Let's start with driving. How did you get into driving horses? Um, I actually, I was at vet school in North Carolina. Uh, I lived just outside of Raleigh. And I was fox hunting. And one of the people in the hunt club, Dee Dee Bushneck, she's a a combined driver and she does Morgan pleasure driving. Uh, She donated a, uh, you know, driving lesson at the silent auction. And I just bid on it for fun. And I never even thought I'd ever drive. I never even thought about it. And, um, I won that lesson, and then I went, and I was hooked. Wow. So that's how it all started. You bought a lesson. I bought a lesson at the silent auction. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, it changed my life. <laughs> Obviously. I mean, it is your life now. So you went, how, how many years have you been doing this? Um, I probably started driving in, like, 98. and um, But I didn't drive that much, you know, like, I just... Just I around. did it for fun yeah. on the weekends. And I, like, leased this fox hunter that also drove. Um, but I leased him mainly <laughs> just for fox hunting. And uh, so I guess I really started, like, seriously driving in, like, 2002 or 2004. Well, Wendy, wasn't it a problem when he tried to go off-road and jump the, the fences <laughs> the with the carriage hooked yeah. up? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, actually, he did do that a couple of times <laughs> because I was driving this. <laughs> I I shouldn't even tell this story, but I will. Yes, you should. Yes, you should. I, was, I was driving this rickety old Meadowbrook. This is why I don't really like rickety old cars. And, um, you know, I was a beginner, and I was driving cones, and when you get into cones, you kind of want to push it, and I didn't think about being in an antique. And um, the wheel collapsed, like the spoke Ooh. broke when I was whipping around a turn, so then we fell out, and then the horse ran off with just the carriage, Ooh. and uh, no people, and he actually did try to jump a fence, and when, by the time we found um, the carriage, it was just, it didn't make it over the fence, so it was like a whole pile of splinters, and the horse was fine. He was uh. totally fine. <laughs> and, and he, he made it over the fence? Again. He made it over, yeah, he was a great <laughs> jumper. <laughs> <laughs> That's fabulous. <laughs> that you yeah. nobody got hurt except for the old rickety old cart. <laughs> the rickety now, old cart. So how do you make the jump from, uh, no pun intended, from two horses to four? I mean, how did that happen? And because you, um, this is you know a short period of time, relatively, for you to really get seriously into driving and then to move up to four in hand. Well, you know, I was really lucky because um, I think Sterling talked about my the two little horses that we bought, the Welsh cob crosses. Um, and they, I was learning to drive pair with them when they were babies, but one's really forward and the other one's really lazy, and they are brothers, and they've been together all the time, so the lazy one knows he can just not work, and the, and the fast one gets mad at him, but just pulls all the carriage. So, so do you go I, around in circles a lot? Um. Yeah, I mean, it's totally <laughs> aggravating, and I thought, oh, I hate pairs. I don't know why I'm doing this, so... Then Sterling said, well, why don't you drive tandem? So I thought, oh, that's a great idea. Now tell everybody so what I, tandem is. Oh, tandem is one in front of the other. One in front. Oh, oh, okay. So I put the lazy one in the back, and he had to pull the carriage. And the one that's really forward was in the front, and he didn't have to do any work. But he's just really forward, so he's easy to steer. Like, if you put a lazy one in front, it's like trying to push a string somewhere. But uh. if you have one that's forward and going, it's much easier to drive tandem. So 
I started to drive tandem with those two, and um, I really actually enjoy tandem the best of all driving, um, you know, better than floor and hand. But, so in uh, tandem, Wendy, does the front horse do the steering? In other words, he's the guide? Well, in um, tandem, it is like floor and hand. Like, you have to articulate them. If you just let the front mm. horse steer, they kind of pull the wheeler horse over, and you you fall in on the turn. So you still have to steer them both. And you still have two sets but, of reins, one to the back and one to the front? Yeah, so the rein here knowing is exactly like forehand. hand. So the jump to forehand hand wasn't so hard because I already did a lot of tandem driving. So I, I had, you know, rein handling. By the way, uh, I have yeah. to tell Helena this. Uh, so when he handed me the reins to drive this forehand hand team of very cute hackney ponies, um, you get four reins, and he, now he had them connected for me, so there's this up and down movement and everything you have to do. And I have to be honest, I had no freaking clue what he was talking about. I, because the <laughs> reins just go up, and they break off into the different horses. And I think right. he had an inkling that I had an idea, but I really didn't, Wendy. I was <laughs> faking it the whole time. And thank God great. he was sitting there. He kept saying, you're doing great. And I'm going, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just, like, guessing here. Um, but it was fun. You did great. <laughs> well, you know what I did um, when I first started driving for in the end? I, uh, I had these colored reins, these synthetic colored reins. And I, uh, my colors are purple with a little bit of red. So I had purple and red reins, and then Sterling's like, okay, why don't you do, like, one side purple and the other side red? And then I had hand parts, and some, like, they just came by accident. The, the leaders were brown, and the wheelers were black. So when I used to go out like that, I used to tell people that I'm, I was a beginner foreign hand driver, so I needed to color coordinate my race yeah. to know which one to pull. <laughs> See, another uh, another obsessive compulsive color coordinator. <laughs> That's right. That's I needed right. little maps and arrows myself, uh, <laughs> s- saying where each one. Well, next meant. time you come, I'll let you use my color coordinated. Uh, before hand rain. Oh, good, good, good. Well, I'm looking forward to coming out again. That'll be so much fun. Hey, so you now are, you, you did move up to, to four horses, and you're on the competitive side now, obviously, doing, doing that. What's it like for a female in that particular discipline? It's dominated by men, especially when you get to that level. Um, and it's like a lot of things are dominated by men when you get to that level, but at the lower levels of riding, it's mostly women. It changes when you get to that level. So what's it like for you at that level? Um, well, I think it's really exciting. I love to compete to forehand. I mean, it's a lot of work, and um, like I never bring enough help. That is my biggest problem. So it, it is a lot more work, and you don't get to see as much of the show when you're driving forehand handling when you're driving the other turnouts, but um, as the, as one of the only women, uh, like when we were going for the WEG selection trials, there was like 12 of us, and um, it was just mainly Cindy and I were the Americans, and then uh, Deb Lattery was Canadian, and um, I think that the guys were great to us, and, and, um, and were really supportive. You know, I think I think they were more than helpful. I, I would say, especially Chester Weber has really taken me under his wing and helped me so much with everything from like loaning me a carriage to giving me advice and helping me walk the course. And I, I think all the guys are really great and helpful. So it doesn't sound like your gender is an issue at all. Well, like maybe it helps because they treat us like their baby sisters, and they don't think we're competition until we like sneak up behind them. And <laughs> all the better. That's okay. Well, so I mean, I can't. I can't say I win anything, but you know, still. yet you will. <laughs> just, you will keep up that strategy. So, how do you go from? Um, uh, can I just throw something in here quickly? Oh, gosh. And I'll let you ask your question. Don't forget it. I just wanted uh-huh. to say, uh, next time you're going someplace and need a groom that doesn't much know what he's doing, let me know. <laughs> okay, great. Okay, good. Perfect. He's got to get in his own plug. What about me? I want, what if I wanted a groom? What if I want to learn how to drive? You can come too. There's plenty of room on the carriage. Yeah, she needs all the help she can get is what it sounded like. Yeah. I do. See, I have no interest in driving one horse, but for sure, no problem. I'll take that on. <laughs> so you have, like Glenn said, there's so many different facets to your, your horse life and your career. You're also um, a doctor, a, a veterinarian. But you mm-hmm. you practice traditional Chinese veterinary medicine, and I'm interested in, well, first of all, how you do that, and you know what you what part of your life that takes up right now, and then how does that impact your relationship with your horses? And, so let's start with and the. And she's um, going to answer that, Helena, right after we take this break. 
Again, you're doing it to me. This is no fun anymore. <laughs> I'm going over to the jumping show. <laughs> For Uncle Jimmy's brand products, we'll be right back with Wendy's answer to that question. Regular listeners to the Stable Scoop show know that Helena and I just love Uncle Jimmy's and his fantastic line of products. His products have the highest quality ingredients, and that is why they have taken off like they have. Of course, it all started with Uncle Jimmy's hanging balls for use in the stalls, and then came squeezy buns. We know you need to reward your horse outside of the stall as well. That is why Uncle Jimmy developed Uncle Jimmy's squeezy buns. Squeezy buns are all natural and loaded with nutritional ingredients for your horse. Unlike similar products on the market, they are individually wrapped to preserve freshness and eliminate mess. With competitive pricing and Uncle Jimmy's quality guarantee, the Squeezy Buns promise to be a hit among horses and horse lovers alike. Learn more about all of Uncle Jimmy's products or to find a dealer, visit uncle-jimmys.com. That's uncle-jimmys.com. All right, and we're back. Sorry, Helena. Okay, so just reiterate what your question was again. But it's not okay. (laughs) It's never okay. All right. So I'm interested in hearing about um, Wendy's practice as a as she practices traditional Chinese veterinary medicine, and then as a you know sort of transition into how does how do those guiding philosophies affect the way she drives and trains and rides? Um, Well, I think um, I speak for a lot of veterinarians that came from you know, conventional veterinary medicine and then have gone on to, like, acupuncture, herbal therapy, so in that. One of the things that's really uh, rewarding about Chinese medicine is that um, you can fix a lot of problems that before we, I would only, like, mask the symptoms. I would just treat symptoms. And Chinese medicine, you look for the root of the problem and then you try to fix the root of the problem and bring the animal back into balance. Mm-hmm. So not just, like, cover one symptom with, with a drug that may have side effects that affect something else. And, um, of course, there are problems that you need regular, you know, conventional medicine for, but uh, I, I have a referral practice, so so I think it works very well in conjunction with other, other therapies. And sometimes, like, um, for example, the best... Uh, one of the best examples of Chinese medicine that, that I find really rewarding and exciting is, um, like, doctrines with long backs a lot of times get, you know, back injuries where they're paralyzed. Mm-hmm. And the option is $4,000 back surgery or nothing. And um, so I do see a lot of cases like that. And acupuncture can help them. Uh, like, it's really exciting to do acupuncture on a dog that's paralyzed, and then he gets up and walks at the end of the treatment. Oh, my gosh. How satisfying. That's, yeah, that's really exciting. And it's also dramatic because uh, I do hemoacupuncture at the tip of the tail. So, you know, they may come in and, like, not be able to wag their tail. And then all of a sudden they start wagging their tail and they're flicking blood everywhere. And, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I know you look like a witch doctor, you know. But, um, and I'm not going to say they, like, get up and run. But you can see, like, a dramatic improvement in one session of acupuncture, uh, and that's really exciting. Things like that are really exciting. Tell us a little bit about the yin and yang principle as it applies to this type of medicine. Well, that's like the, the theory of balance. Like when you're, like the yin is cool and the yang is hot. It's, you know, the dark and light side of everything. So in Chinese medicine, you try to balance that out. Uh, a good example of that is in Florida. Uh, you know, we have a lot of non-sweaters down there. So that's, uh, we treat that by, like, if they have a yang excess, we try to um, cool out their yang so they don't have the hotness from the outside atmosphere and their body naturally runs hot. So we try to treat uh, that problem like that. So if they have Um, a yang excess, you introduce yin? Right, exactly. You have, like, yin type herbs, and you use yin points, acupuncture points. And also uh, food therapy is really helpful for that, like cooling foods, like the white part of the watermelon rind is really uh, something that horses will eat and also very beneficial if they're non-sweater. Hmm. So well, that leads me to my next question then. How much of what you do, and you know, our title sponsor for this show is Omega Alpha, and they have all natural supplement products, uh, 
that are made from herbs. How much of what Chinese medicine that you do is herbal in nature? Um, well, I actually do, uh, you know, it all is what the client can afford because in veterinary medicine, we don't have health insurance. So it's always better to use acupuncture and herbal therapy, but like not everybody wants to take that step right away. But I would say for the best results, a combination of acupuncture and herbal therapy for, for most cases is, is what you'd want to do. So I have all kinds of herbal formulas that, um, I get from Jingtang Herbal, which is a company in Ocala started by an equine veterinarian who was trained in China, Dr. Shea. And he also runs the um, Qi Institute down there. He's one of the most well-respected uh, veterinary acupuncturists in the world. And he has um, all different formulas that he's made for specifically for animals, so we don't have to use human formulas anymore for the horses or dogs and cats. Um, and he also has a very high quality control program there. Well, so, so uh, you know, I just have this picture, Wendy, of uh, your your office, you know, having beads on the door, and it's a little bit dark, <laughs> and there's all these jars sitting on wooden shelves. That's what I have this picture of, you know. Well, that's not what my office looks like because I have a mobile practice. Okay. So, <laughs> so. Um, I am going to upgrade my mobile practice to uh, a mini. I'm going to get an all-wheel drive mini, so maybe I can put beads on the back. You're going to you're going to do your mobile veterinary practice out of a mini Cooper. Yeah, I am going to get a mini Cooper. Oh, now there's a there's a picture that we need there, Helena. <laughs> I think that's yeah, great I'm, idea. I'm going green. I think that's great. <laughs> Are you going to get the wagon version? I'm going to get the wagon version, and I guess since I'm a Kentucky person now, I need the all-wheel drive in case it snows. I guess you really don't need a whole lot of room for some needles, huh? Well, no, that's the thing. I don't have to take a ton of equipment because um, it's mostly, uh, you know, I have my needles and I have uh, some herbal formulas that I take with me. But a lot of times I go out and especially the first case is usually a consult where I have to take in a lot of information because Chinese medicine also deals with, like, the environment that the horse lives in and their job and then the owner's. And um, a lot of it that um, involves their, the horse's personalities. Like, you, you know, my practice is called Five Elements for Animals. Mm. And the five element theory is, uh, you may have heard about that with Feng Shui, but it's like uh, five different personalities and five different elements. And certain types of horses, like say it's a wood type horse, that's one of the elements. They're more prone to uh, problems like ulcers or anger issues or, you know, eye problems, foot problems, just because of the nature of their personality. So, so like, the first, um, the first consult I do usually takes a while where I'm just talking to them and taking in some information. And do you find that the, um, the owners are... Do they come to you as people who are already open to alternative medicine, or uh, do you find that they're they've come to you as a last resort, and then then their minds well, are opened to it? You know what? I actually have both kinds. Uh, the majority of people already know about acupuncture, and, and that's something they want to try. But I have had some clients. Um, like I said, I was on the Panhandle of Florida, and there's a lot of like you know cowboy type people that were not really into acupuncture or that didn't believe it, but that said, well, you know, what else am I going to do? I'm going to try it. And then, you know, we're pleasantly surprised. Right. So. Well, I think it's, I think it's a great compliment to, um, I don't even say to conventional medicine. I treating the whole situation, even, you know, you can't even say I'm treating the whole horse because you have to take into account the environment and the owner and personality. And so, yeah, it's, um, so do you ever get a little bit overwhelmed by some of your, your patients' situations? Well, um, I mean, not really. They're all pretty good, and they, uh, you know... Or do I you mean, say, I like, oh, this some... is challenging. This is, I really got to sit down and dig my heels into this one. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I do have some challenging things, and there are some cases that are frustrating because you can't change the certain situation, but you just have to deal with it as best you can. Like, I mean, there are certain show horses that really should stop showing, 
but they're because it makes them too angry. Like, like yep. for example, the wood horse. Um, I, I was explaining to somebody last night. That's like a type A personality person that works on Wall Street. Mm. Like, and they have to commute through traffic, and they have all this stuff going on, and they hate their boss, and blah blah blah. blah. But you can't change a lot of that stuff, so you can only help them deal with it better. Are you able to be frank with your clients and say things like this? Well, yeah, I I think so. I mean, there have been times when, like, uh, you know, the, you know, there's some parts of the owner's personality that you can't change, right? Right. And the, and then you just have to, you know, that's just their relationship, so you just have to work with it. So. Like, for example, a fire person is, um, I always explain this, like Erica Kane, you know, like the diva, <laughs> and they're like always overexcited. So like that kind of person with a water type of force, and water is like re- really fearful and spooky. Like, so like a beginner fire person buying a water baby Arab and trying to go trail riding is like a recipe for disaster. But- that would be me. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say that. <laughs> that is Did so... you buy a baby Arab for trail yeah, riding? Pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. And I'm totally fire. <laughs> And then she bought wow. this Arab standard bread, saddle bread cross that's just bouncy, goofy. And yeah. there you see the combination. You just described it. She does, she, okay. she does do communication. Yeah, so you need to get a big fat quarter horse. See, that's what she, we told her in the first place, and now she's looking for. You know, that's <laughs> the great thing about Chinese medicine. It is just like it's 4,000 years of pattern recognition. Well, that's you know, a really not, good. Yes, and it, it's, yeah. sometimes you need to put it in. And this is why I like the traditional Chinese medicine is because, and philosophies is because you, they put it into a visual or a, a visual, like, you know, fire and water. Right. Mm, yeah, you know what? That makes sense. You have to, it allows you to remove the emotion from the occasion. Like, there's nothing bad about being a fire. Being a fire is great. You know, you, I mean, that's super, especially like in your industry and your job, like that's the best personality to be fire. But it's just that now that you know that you should look for a horse that complements your personality, okay, which would so, be an earth horse. All right, now I want to know what I am. So I got ADD, uh, you know, total. Um, I never grew past the age of 16 uh, personality-wise. And what else is there, Helena? You can probably do better at this. I think you're a fire, too. You think? You know what? I think that you're actually a an earth because you're really easygoing and, you're, and, and you get along with everybody and you're, you're happy a lot of times and you don't That's get true. stressed out. I, I, yeah, I try not. I'm too old for stress. <laughs> you are too. No, you are pretty happy. You are, you are pretty easygoing. Yeah. Hey, you know Where's what? the See, ADD come saying. in? Where's the ADD and being able to concentrate on something the, the for about a- 10 seconds? Yes, the ADD is, um, well, we all have, you know, that's just your dominant personality. So the ADD, like we all have different parts of, we all have different elements in our personality. So that could be like a little bit of fire in your in your personality because you have to have a little bit of fire because you go on the radio and talk all the time. This is fun. See, I think that's the, that's his yin and yang is his, his fire earth combination, I think is the yin to my fire earth combination. Yes. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? He's more earth and a little bit of fire and I'm more fired a little bit of earth. And I think that's why we do well together on the show. But I think so too. This is awesome. I that's totally want to go why and... she's, In other words, that's the reason she's, she's been able to put up with me for two and a half years. That's it. Well, you know what actually is really, really fun is um, I started driving four in hand after I did the Chinese medicine. So I was already, you know, I already knew about that stuff. And then when I, I used it a little bit in my driving, but when I put the four in hand together, it made a huge difference, you know, because I knew the type of person I am and what type of forces I need and the group dynamic of the forehand. And that's what I found really exciting and addictive about the forehand driving is the personalities of the horses. And you found that it worked. So you're, you're like, you know, making, you're like Frankenstein. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. I'm sure she's happy to hear that analogy. No, no, no. I I know it was because I, I, (laughs) that's the fire in me. (laughs) Really, you know, you. But now you I know. Like there are horses I would not even look at. Like, 
I don't have to try them. I, I just go look at them in their stall, and I know, okay, this one's not going to fit in my team because I don't like, you know, I can't have wood personalities because I'm wood and fire. I'm bossy and, like, you know, hyper. I can't be dealing with a horse that's bossy and hyper. I actually have one of those, but I'm not going to get rid of him because that's mommy's baby. And but I, everybody else has to follow the program and not question me and just go and drive. <laughs> oh, I How love this Ster- woman. How did Sterling this- uh, make it this long as your fiance? Are you guys actually planning a wedding or, or, or uh, is that not <laughs> well, going to happen now? <laughs> no, no. It is. It is but, but. I'm just picking on you. <laughs> Thank you, Wendy. We're playing run out of time, and this, that's too bad because I have about a thousand more questions for you. Um, will you come back again sometime? Yes, anytime. Okay, good. We, we would appreciate that. And Wendy's uh, website, to see her beautiful horses, by the way, is sportcob.com. And I will give you a report because she has, a, she has kindly invited me to go sit in her carriage. I'm not sure I'm going to drive her horses. They're a little bigger than the other ones. No, um, they're easy. They're yeah, easier than the Hackneys, for sure. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I, I, as we were getting to, to make one of the turns in the indoor as I was driving, the one Hackney in the front was rearing. And I was... I was like, yeah. okay, well, how do you control that when you're sitting all the way 20 feet behind them? You know, you just, that's kind of different than when you're sitting on them. You know, uh, it's a little <laughs> bit different. Yeah. But thank you, Wendy. We appreciate it. Her website is sportcob.com, and we will definitely have you back again. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. We have to have Wendy back sometime. We just need to do a special show on Chinese medicine and talk about it. I mean, <laughs> I want Wendy to go find me a horse. <laughs> Yeah, he Something can, that's he can not figure water out your yin and your yang and make sure you don't get the wrong one. Well, you know, anybody that's a regular listener to the show knows how much I believe in yin and yang. And so um, I now I believe in it even more. <laughs> I just never thought to use it to find a horse. Duh. She, she should really just consult for people looking for spouses because she nailed us right on the head, didn't she? She did. She she got us pegged. See, that's what I'm saying. That's the, the, that's the, the little treasure trove that is... Wendy. I'm scared to go out to dinner with her now because she's always going to be thinking. You should be frightened. I should be because she could be thinking and then analyzing and then I'll be like. (sighs) But she may end up telling you something about yourself that you you didn't realize and could make your life. No, you do want to (laughs) know. No, I really don't. (laughs) I'm too old. Too old to start learning new things about myself. Oh, you might be an old dog, but there's plenty of tricks yet for you to learn. Well, this has been fun, but we've killed the whole hour, so we have to go. An hour, um, <laughs> I know. We've been on there. We've been on. Oh, I need cake and steak. And we have some more fun coming up next week, too. Be sure to listen in for another great episode next week as, as we, have, we have a special guest from Sidelines Magazine, which is sort of like the gossip magazine, the, the people magazine of the horse world. Awesome. And that's right up our alley, so we have to have him on to talk about that. And also. What? I'm not (laughs) stepping over your lines. Every time I do every week, you get mad at me and yell at me. So I was to say the first line about next week, and then you're to say the next line. Oh, 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 okay. I didn't realize we were in the show wrap-up. Okay, so for details about today's show, go to staplescoop.com, and you will find links, photos, and more information about today's guests. And we do love your feedback, so please make sure you go to Facebook and follow us under Stable Scoop. We also tweet every now and again. Um, our Twitter <clears throat> handle, I know that's so lame, our, <laughs> our Twitter yeah. login so we're, is... What are we, CB radios in I the know, 70s? I know. <laughs> well, I always forget what to call it. Your, our Twitter name, our Twitter login, our Twitter ID is Horse Radio. You can also follow my tweets at Helena underscore B-E-E. And you wonder why I'm always taking your lines. Many thanks to our sponsors, Equestrian Collections, Uncle Jimmy's, and of course our title sponsor, Omega Alpha. And you can listen to all our other shows at horseradionetwork.com. And Helena will be, we should mention, on Monday morning, this coming Monday morning, which is the 16th, is it? Yes. Uh, 16th, she will be hosting with me the Horses in the Morning live show at 9 a.m. So if you are like our emailers and you love Helena, uh, like Kelsey, and you want to hear more of Helena, you can listen to her 9 a.m. at horsesinthemorning.com as she will be co-hosting the show with me. Yay! Uh, And you have to put up with me too, Kelsey. (laughs) Darn. I'll see what I can do about that, Kelsey. (laughs) Have a great week, everybody, and we'll be back again next week. Again, you blew the super cool new closing. You keep changing it. Well, Helena, that's it for this week. 
Well, Glenn, I think that's plenty, but there will be more next week. We're just never going to get it. No, I don't think we're ever going to get it right. We will forever be fire and water or fire and wood or fire and earth. All right. Well, I have to go eat my rabbit food now, so I'll see you later. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye.